Hey beautiful, it's Mizgo here. Now if you didn't realize, it's June, and when it's a new month, we have a new episode of How to Not Suck as a UI Designer. So, let's get right into it. Now, before we do, very quick announcement. Over the next six to 12 months, I'll be releasing a number of courses. Freelance, UI, Figma Masterclass, UX, and also a workflow course. Yes, there is a lot to learn because I have a lot to teach and I want to see a lot of you guys become legendary designers. So if you are interested, make sure to check the link in the description, express your interest by dropping your email. That's all you have to do. And for all early birds, anyone that drops in the email, you will get that juicy, juicy discount when these courses launch. So make sure if you are interested, check that out. If you're not, let's jump right into this video. Okay. So remember, with these videos, you need to figure out what are those mistakes that I'm making. So in this design, it's a fictitious news portal website called Ms. News, and I have implemented a very bad habit that lots of UI designers have when they're doing design work. So have a quick think, I'll give you three seconds to think about it. What is that bad habit? All right, so hopefully you have some ideas. Now, that really bad habit that I have implemented into this design practice is utilizing placeholder content. It is so important for UI designers, UX designers to be writing their own copy. Whether you like it or not, if you want to succeed, if you want to become a great UX designer, believe me and follow my advice, you should practice copywriting. Because copywriting is the fundamental building blocks of how you can create impactful designs. Copy text on the page is what ultimately defines what that page is about. It also acts as a mechanism to help set better expectations for the reader or the customer that's viewing the page. So if you don't write the copy, how are you really creating meaningful experiences for the end user if that's what they rely on to experience a good experience? They need to know what the page is about. They need to have good copy to help guide them through a process. Now you'll also realize because I use placeholder copy, I've made some very bad design decisions and I'm gonna show you exactly what they were. Now if you see that once I add in some real copy, some real content, and even if the team hasn't got the content ready, I will go ahead and create it myself. Now, because I've put in real content here, I realized I'm actually on the business page. So I actually applied a focus state in the navigation. Now, if you use placeholder copy, you might overlook that. And then once you go into development, you have to go back and add in all those active states and it just becomes a very messy process. So when you use real copy, you start to actually think about all the interactions. Now you can see down here, if we maintain the four column grid on the design, as you can see here, the four columns for the articles, we won't be able to fit those, ti those titles and the copy inside these cards. It's just unrealistic. So what we had to do was actually create larger columns for this content and also break it out from the card and also show developers what titles would look like if they were on one line, two lines or three lines. So if you use real content, you will start to realize your design decisions will change, but you will also start to become a better designer because you will start to think about how you can frame a page, how you can communicate ideas, and how you can actually communicate things that you have in your mind and the story that you want to tell in your designs. And ultimately, they work together really, really well. Now, the second design challenge. Have a think about this, guys. A very simple one. Choose a password field. What can we do for this password field to really improve that experience when entering a password. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. All right, hopefully you got some ideas. So the thing that we can do, these are two very common practices that you see in UI design nowadays. When people are typing in their password, giving the user the ability to show and hide with the password that they typed to make sure that there are no spelling mistakes when they're setting the password. Now we also want to add a password strength to the input field. If we have set a requirement for the user to actually meet specific criteria, we need to let the user know how they're performing against those criteria. Now the third design challenge, I want you to have a quick think about this one. Could be a little bit tricky. So give me three seconds while I scroll down as well. One, two, three. Have a think about what can we do to really make this form a little bit more seamless and a little bit more compelling and nice to go through. 
All right, guys, hopefully you have some ideas. What we can do is to actually turn this into a four step process and ultimately tell the user how many steps there are, what step they're on, and then actually give them a progress bar to let them know that here is where you're at. And when you hit continue, it should grow to give that user, the end user, a sense of progression. All right guys, the last design challenge for you. So imagine we have a design over here. You can see it's a dashboard design. We have a sidebar, a logo, some items on the left, and then we have a members table. You can add some members, you can edit, and you can see a list of all your members. Now, imagine we are handing this design over to developers. What is that one thing that a lot of UI designers always forget to hand over with this design? So I want you to have a quick think about it. The developers are going to need to implement it. What do we need to hand over to them? And it's something that a lot of designers always forget. All right, hopefully you have an idea. The one thing that we always need to include because it is fundamental, it is an experience that every customer is going to go through, is an empty state. Now, as designers, we always naturally gravitate to designing that perfect scenario because it looks good, it's beautiful, we have all the UI elements and we can share it on Dribbble and get all these juicy likes. But then we forget that Every user that goes through a product or a platform is bound to experience an empty state because they don't have any inventory or any assets added to their profile or dashboard or whatever product it might be. And you will realize that a lot of developers end up asking designers to provide those empty states. So make sure whenever you are designing out an experience, you will always gravitate to designing that perfect scenario but don't forget to also design what that empty state looks like. What does that first time experience look like? Because that will help streamline a lot of the design implementation process for when you hand designs over to those developers. So hopefully you learned a thing or two with this video and make sure if you are interested in taking on an upcoming course for me, make sure to check the link in the description. Oh, and by the way, we're nearly at 100 members in the designership. And that also includes designers have started to win freelance clients from learning things from our community. Designers are being inspired, they're being motivated, they're starting their own little side projects, and ultimately they're actually meeting each other on Zoom calls. So if you wanna be part of a growing design community that's genuine, it's active, and it's also led by someone that you appreciate and you gently smash the like button for, make sure to check the designership. Link is in the description. All right, guys, I really am grateful for you. I appreciate you. I will see you in another video very, very soon. Thank you.